Hey everybody, this is Dave Raposa. The following video is a side video that's included with the full tutorial, which covers my entire process over the course of over four hours. And then I have another video that you can watch, which is just my basic breakdown of the technique, which is 45 minutes, so you don't have to watch the full four and a half hours. But this disclaimer pretty much covers everything that I think about the process, what I think you should expect, and how I think that you can grow as an artist to get to the point where you feel comfortable using the techniques. The link for the full tutorial, if you'd like to purchase one, is in the description, or you can go to DaveRaposa.com and click Tutorials. But yeah, I hope you like this, and if you have any questions, feel free to message me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thank you so much for all your support. I couldn't do this without you. I, I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks. Hello and welcome to the tutorial disclaimer. I wanted to make this just so that you had the you had an idea of what these videos are going to be going into them. Uh, the two videos that you will watch in this tutorial are both a little different but kind of the same. The first one is the basic breakdown which just is it's pretty dry. I go in and I basically just talk like a computer and I go like you do this and then you do this and then you do that. <laughs> and it's just like very direct and to the point. But the other one, the longer one, which is like five hours, goes into everything. Everything I believe about art, everything I think helped me, uh, my design ideas, theming of your design, uh, your influences and how to bring them into your work. And then my whole approach to traditional versus digital and how they kind of work together to help make me a better artist so first thing I want to talk about is that you shouldn't expect to nail this the first time. I've been working for a really long time in art and I know that for a lot of people who are starting out it's kind of intimidating to watch tutorials of people that look like they already kind of know what they're doing. You know it's very easy to see that stuff and think like oh it's just easy for them like these people they've done it a million times like I can't use this technique like this stuff won't work for me. But that's not true. It's just a matter of hard work. Uh, you know, if you're working along with this tutorial and you're having trouble, it's fine. Don't worry about it at all. It's not you failing in a negative way. The whole point of art in general is that you get through it by trial and error. You know, you just have to hit those roadblocks. You have to have a hard time with it. That's what this is. You know, if, if it weren't that, everybody would do it. Everybody who said they wanted to be an artist would be an artist, and that's not the case. You know, this is one of the hardest things, to, in my opinion, and uh, it takes a lot of dedication, and if you really want to do it, you have to be willing to fail over and over. And in that way, you'll improve. So if you sit here and you're watching these tutorials and it's intimidating in any way, or maybe not, maybe you're looking at it and you go, this guy ain't shit. He totally sucks. Look at his artwork. Man, I could crush this if I had a chance. Then do it. Crush me. That's the whole point of this. <laughs> I want you to get better. I want you to be the best version of yourself. That's all I want to encourage with these videos. But if you're feeling the other way, then I would just say, you know, dive into this. Let yourself fail. Don't worry about being the best. Don't think that this is, you know, you either do it or you don't, and this tutorial is either going to help you or it won't. You know, the first time through on this, it probably won't do much. But, you know, I try to explain more beyond the whole process that just my whole philosophy on doing it and learning for yourself. When I started doing this, I had no idea what I was doing. I was basically just winging it. And I saw kind of like a vague idea of what I thought you should do to learn the fundamentals to become an artist. But I wasn't even entirely sure. But what I'm getting at is that I just started. Regardless of really knowing anything, I just started doing something, even if it was wrong. You know, I had tons of people tell me that I was studying the wrong things, and I wasn't, you know, I didn't understand the terms in art. I, I wasn't, like, educated in any way. You know, I didn't go to college. I'm all self-taught. I learned everything off the Internet. I learned everything from forums online. I used to participate in a forum called conceptart.org. And on that website, there, were the, there was a sketchbook section where you could watch all of these pros who had grown and become these amazing artists. And you got to see how they grew into becoming the artists they are now. And I got to see how they studied. And that's pretty much what I went off of. 
that's pretty much how I learned everything. I just was like, okay, I'll do what they do. And I learned that some of it was wrong, some of it was right, some of it worked for me, some of it didn't. But I just kept going, and really that was, I think, the most important thing for me was just to keep moving, regardless of whether or not it was right. It's just better than nothing, you know? And if nothing else, just keep going. Just keep pushing yourself. Keep feeling uncomfortable. Keep challenging yourself to do something that you don't think you can do. And in that way, you will succeed. Like, if you just keep on down that road, there's nothing that can stop you. You know, people always shy away from being uncomfortable. And whenever that happens, especially in something like art, you end up falling into your similar ways. And, you know, eventually you'll stop moving forward. And that's, that's a problem, you know, if you want to get better. If you want to actively improve yourself, then you have to challenge yourself. So it's a good thing that this might be intimidating or that this might seem hard. It means that, you know, if you want to do it, that it's worth doing. You know, if you if you feel uncomfortable by it, then dive right at it. At every single thing that bothers you like that. Just tackle it and nail it down and move forward. Just keep on moving forward. That's the best advice I could give you if you're looking at this and wondering what you can get out of it, is to just see what I do, attempt it the best you can, and then just keep doing it. Because as hard as it might seem, it's not that bad. It's just a matter of dedicating yourself to improving and working hard at it. And you will go somewhere. Like I was saying, I didn't really know what I was doing when I was studying and learning, but it led me to learning how I engage studies and how I improve. You know, it won't always be fun. This whole process won't be fun all the time. Like it shouldn't be. That's not what this is. You know, Hard work isn't always fun. They say that if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. But that doesn't mean it's not hard. And that doesn't mean that you should be afraid of, you know, getting bummed out about this stuff. That you should shy away from, you should shy away from those bad feelings. You know, that's good. You should feel that way. It means that you're pushing yourself. And that's a good thing. Beyond that, when you're studying, uh, one best thing I can say for me was that I would do a study and I would have a purpose for it. So let's say I'm painting something on my desk. Let's say I set up a still life and I have a lamp, which is basically, by the way, the only thing I did as far as like nailing down my lighting. Outside of studying photos I found on Google, that was how I did it in real life. And I think I learned the most from that. But I would set up like a glass of water and you know, I'd look at the textures of everything, but then you have to, take that study that you do and apply it to something. So let's say there's a piece of glass and artwork (laughs) that I want to nail down and I'm having trouble with it. I would say you should supplement your work with a study. So go into your kitchen or whatever else, grab a cup, grab a piece of glass, something, put a light on it and see how light affects that material and paint that and then bring it back over into your work and apply that knowledge. That's how I cemented everything that I know, through repetition and practice and application. Because if you just do these random studies that don't mean anything, and you're never going to use the information that you got from those, or you're not applying it directly to something that's from your head and like working with the tools, you know, it's the difference of learning from a textbook and doing something in the field. It's like when you're out there and you're working and you're learning from experience, then you're actively taking in the information and you're, you know, you're using it in an actionable way, which is then engraving itself in your brain and becoming like muscle memory. So you want to apply yourself all the time, apply all of your studies and work through that. But all that being said, you don't want to limit yourself to just the realistic, if that's not something you want to do. If you want to be a realistic artist, then don't worry about what I'm saying now. I'm just saying that you're not limited to this. Once you learn all of these things, the best part about learning the fundamentals, the best part about nailing down anatomy, about learning lighting, about being able to paint from life and paint realistically, is then coming back into other styles, getting simpler with it, getting cartoony, even trying stuff like animation. The amount of knowledge and just information that you take away from that and bring into this new thing is going to make you a much better artist. That kind of stuff you can apply it in so many ways to so many things. 
you know, a cartoonist can exaggerate certain features because they, they understand them. So some of the best cartoonists in the world, it's like they are good at drawing regular anatomy, but without understanding how those things work, it's hard to emphasize them and make them look good when they're exaggerated in forms. So like, a, you know, a guy who's, you know, like in a cartoon, like in a, let's say a Pixar movie or something, the way that they're exaggerated, all the forms, the way that they're made cartoony, but they still look real when they move and express themselves. All of that is informed by real life studies. And it just makes you a better artist. So I would suggest that if even if you want to do um, very stylized things to study realism, and if you do study realism, I would say challenge yourself to do some other styles you know let yourself move away from your comfort zone and take on other challenges it can be a huge benefit I know that it helped me a lot it helped me kind of like nail down my whole approach to everything but yeah I think that uh, that can be a really good practice for you the last thing I want to talk about is this issue I think a lot of people have where they see something like this and they see all the tools that are involved and the supplies and things and they think like I don't have any of that so I can't start doing this I just want to say that you don't have to wait to start do whatever you can right now whatever you have with you if you're excited to do something traditionally like it's going to be in the video then just do it do it with cheap supplies if you can't afford anything like I'm using. You know, some of it can be expensive, like the Kalinsky sable brushes. But I would just say that you should, you know, just get started. Just start doing something. When I started doing watercolors, I was using like these really bad student watercolors that were just god awful in their colors. It just looks so bad. And I knew it wasn't great, but I was like, okay, well, these aren't very expensive, and I can learn like this. I can just learn how to build my values. I can learn how to manipulate the paint. And the best part of that was that I worked with these really bad watercolors, and when I moved into good watercolors, it was like, oh my god, all of a sudden I'm on the fast track. <laughs> like, I had used this horrible setup for so long, and now that I have this, it's like I can fly. Like, I, I think it's good to start with the tools that you have if you have them if you don't but you can't afford the really expensive stuff then don't worry about getting the most expensive stuff just get what you can afford and just dive into it do the best you can you know through study and working hard and just applying yourself you're gonna get it you're gonna get it eventually so don't worry about being the best at this before you start don't worry about having the best tools before you start don't get everything I got you know just because and then not use them you know just get started now don't wait so yeah I think that's one of like the biggest barriers to entry on a lot of things is that we feel like we need to be something before we even get going we need to have the things we don't have yet you know how many anatomy books and art books do you have that you just keep on your shelf and you don't even read them you know it's almost like we buy these things and we just kind of look at them like as if buying them was like the matrix where you get this plug in the back of your head and you're like I want to learn Chinese and it's like and that's not how it works you have to take in this information and apply it so you just have to start it doesn't matter if you have all the books it doesn't matter if you know all the information it doesn't matter if all this stuff is bought and paid for and you have a whole library of things that are supposed to help you it just matters that you're acting on it it just matters that you're making moves and you're trying things and you're working hard all the information in the world <laughs> that won't beat that it's like if you're not doing anything then you're not doing anything and don't think that you know buying a tutorial like this and just watching it and walking away is gonna do anything for you and that buying those books and just never reading them or just kind of like glancing at them once and getting rid of them but never using the knowledge is gonna help you in any way if that's the case then just don't do that stuff <laughs> just keep it simple don't buy the things and just do what you can with what you have and then when you're led to that, when you hit a wall and you feel like, I don't know anything, I can't do more with what I already have, then it's like, get extra knowledge, get those books, get the things that are going to help you and grow from there. But just get going now. You don't need to be the best in the world in order to do something right now. You can just start. You can just push yourself and become somebody. You know, I never went to school. I never had the money for college. I didn't really know anybody who did art. I, you know, 
I never had the opportunity to really like learn and under anybody. And when I started doing art, there weren't really any tutorials online. There wasn't videos like this. There was no gum road. There were no concept art tutorials. There were videos. You know, there was only some little knowledge here and there about Photoshop. <laughs> and YouTube was like just getting going and people still hadn't posted up like tutorial videos and things. And so it was just a matter of winging it and seeing what happens, seeing what you can come up with. So I would just suggest, you know, just get going, get started. And if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to reach out to me. You can contact me at DaveRaposa.com or you can send me a message on Twitter at DaveRaposa. But yeah, thanks so much and I hope the tutorials help. Again, the basic one is around 45 minutes and it covers my approach. It's a pretty dry one. It's not very, you know, intense with uh, all these stories and things and you know little insights it's not so much like that it's more of like exactly what I'm doing step by step and then there's the full tutorial which is the three videos that you know accumulate to like five hours and that one covers everything including the basic breakdown it has the steps but in between the steps I talk about a lot of different things but yeah thanks so much for purchasing this tutorial I hope it helps you in some way and you know send me stuff that you do based on this tutorial if you know if you end up creating something traditionally if you work with brushes for the first time i'd love to see it all right good luck and thanks again hey thank you so much for listening to me get all hyped up and ramble on about all the things i believe in <laughs> and uh you know how i started and all that i really appreciate you guys sitting through that it means a lot to me uh if you'd like to download the, the full tutorial, you can do that at DaveRaposa.com and click the tutorials link in the top or click the link in the description. Um, yeah, thanks so much. And I hope this helped in some way. And uh, if there's anything you'd like to see from me, please let me know in the comments and I, I'd really appreciate it. So yeah, thanks again.